But what could be with Josh Norris is where I want to take this because, look, Josh Norris has played now 46 games this season, which is only 20 off of his career high two years ago. Played 600 minutes. And still, it's just the production has not been up to standard. Only seven goals at five on five for him this year. And I I think it's more beyond goals at this point, Pilsy. He just lacks confidence out there. So how do you produce confidence in a player who's clearly lacking it at the moment? Ross, if I'm Daniel Alfredson, the coaching staff, the next practice I have available, I'm putting Josh Norris on the right side of the power play. And for half an hour, Thomas Shabbat is just feeding him one-timers over and over and over and over and over and over again. Cause that's his bread and butter. Like it, I, I feel like every sense fan is sighing and uh, screaming out in unison on the power play. When Josh Norris gets the puck on the left side, He looks lost out there. He's trying to sidestep over to get a better lane. And by the time he's done that, uh, there's already a defender on him. The lane's blocked. The best he can do is shoot into some shin pads. And look, Josh Norris has a nice wrist shot. But where he makes his dough is the slap shot, the one-timer. So I know that he hadn't had success over on the right side for most of on the power play for most of the start of this season. And that's why they're like, hey, okay, we got to try switching it up here. But... Honestly, maybe, and maybe this is classic definition of insanity, doing the same thing over and over, expecting a different result. But I'm putting him back on the right side, even if, Ross, it's strictly as a decoy. Because we know other teams now are smart to the fact that when he gets it in his sweet spot in his office on that right side, he can blast it. So maybe they're paying extra attention and covering him a little closer. Cool. That should open up more space for the rest of the power play guys on the ice there. So for me, and maybe this is just meatball hockey fan thinking and the the coaching staff obviously Daniel Alfredson knows better than I do and he's involved in it but it's just wild for to me that they're not continuously having him on the right side because it seems like a waste of time having him on the left and it almost looks like they're trying to give him a little slingshot this is what they did with Tim Stutzla another left shot who was playing the left side on the power play for too long they're trying to get it so he's curling up and grabbing the puck with speed the only problem with that is that his stick is still with the outside closer to the boards, so you're giving the goalie extra time to adjust, and you're also giving yourself less of an angle to shoot from. So I don't understand it at all either. And the thing is, too, with Timmy, that's fine, because Timmy can facilitate. He can be a playmaker. He can move better. Josh Norris, he said it himself, not a disher. Go back to that Mike Tuff uh, video from practice, what, two years ago or whatever it was, and he's he's trying to pass it over to Bathurst, and he's like, number nine, not a disher. Like, it's just obvious that that's not in his skill set, and that's fine. If you're paying a guy almost $8 million for the next seven years, and he's a 36 goal scorer, and I believe, Ross, you can fact check me, but I believe that year where he had all those, it was 36 goals, right? Or 35? 35 in 66 games. So I can see where you got the six from. Yeah. Okay. 35 in 66 games. I'm pretty sure he was tied for the league lead in power play goals that year. Well, I can tell you had 19 power play goals in 66 games or sorry, 16 power play goals and 19 even strength goals that year. Yeah. Like eight game winners. I I think you can't, fix Josh Norris until you get him hitting those one timers on the power play in his office again. I, like at, it's unfortunate. He doesn't really have a, the B game you would hope he has, but you got to get him back to that. If, if, uh, if you're asking me and Ross, it's tough because it's going to change your lineup, which your other lines are doing good. It's time to split up Drake Batherson and Josh Norris. So it's time to split up Drake Batherson and Josh Norris. I agree with, I will take it a step further. I think it's time to move Josh Norris to left wing. There's a lot of talk about that right. from the fans perspective. When That's where I was on. Yep. That Shane Pinto was coming back into the lineup, but they moved Ridley Gregg over and Ridley Gregg hasn't been playing his best hockey recently either. You expect those ebbs and flows from an, a, a true rookie. I guess you're not true rookie played 20 games last year, but a guy who's still kind of making his mark in the league. Whereas for Josh Norris, his next game will be the 180th of his career. Like this guy, I don't want to call him a veteran yet, but he's certainly 
getting to that point as a guy who's 24 years old and who's who's going to be a leader on this team, you would hope for many years to come. He'll actually be 25 in May, Pilsy. Like he's entering the prime of his career and it sucks that he's missed a lot of time with injury. Even the year he had 35 goals, he missed 16 games. And then last year only got to play eight and it was really four and then two. And then the other two games he left with injury and didn't finish them. So I get that he's missed a lot of time and that it's hard, but like two of his goals came in the first game, Pilsy. Like this guy has really been struggling to put the puck in the net. So I look at what way can you fix this? Well, why don't you try to put him in a position where maybe he doesn't have to think as much on the ice? Because we know that he's a very thoughtful person. When you think, when you hear him in interviews, like I think he's very much in his own head about, about the struggles on the ice that are that he's going through. And I think to play the wing, not that it's easy, but I think there's a less thinking that you have to do on the ice. And if he could just be the trigger man on a line where you have a playmaking center, look, I don't want to break up the Stutzla Joseph Giroux line, but if you're going to put him somewhere, why not put him at left wing there where you have a true playmaker at right wing speed down the middle and a true number one center in Tim Stutzla. I just want to see just for a little bit what it would look like if Josh Norris was in that position on the wing. Yeah, I'm with you, Ross. I think that's where I would put him as well. And then the nice thing about that is you get to reunite that Joseph Greg Tarasenko line that had a lot of success for a short span, but they so were, were really good. So we're juggling then because that would leave a line of Shane Pinto, Brady Kachuk, and Drake Batherson. And I kind of like that too. I don't too. hate that. I don't hate that. Yeah. And then the fourth line is what it is at this point. Yeah, I mean, yeah, to just put Parker Kelly and Penn there and then whatever else happens. Yeah. Whatever else happens. Belleville plays tonight. We'll touch on that at the end of the game, at the end of the show here, but just to wrap up the conversation on Josh Norris, I still believe in him. We've seen it. Like he had those eight game winning goals that year. He was absolute money and he was Mm -hmm. good away from the puck. Now the one thing say something nice about Josh Norris is that he's still snapping back 52% of his face off. So he's, he's giving the team more possession and he's giving it away. But for $8 million, we the standard is the standard and it's got to be raised a little bit here and um i i don't think we're breaking any news with this conversation i think these are conversations that are being had in the room with josh norris the ice time completely reflects that and i think that this is a very good opportunity for jacques martin to leave a long-term mark on a player and make him understand that when he's not scoring goals the way it came easy to him in the past there are ways for him to still be an impactful player on this team. Yeah, and I mean, Ross, the Senators know better than anyone that you can have wingers that take majority of the draws. Like, look at Claude Giroux, Brady Kachuk. Like, it's not, you don't need to be a centerman to take the draws if you're playing with the Ottawa Senators, so that's fine. Um, I, I think it is time to at least try him on the wing, especially, Ross, in a season like this. Like, if you're battling for a wild card race maybe you don't try shaking up your second line center and and switching up his position like that it's maybe a little much but at this point you got to try everything and you got to see what works and if you're a new ownership and new management regime you got to start figuring out who's part of the solutions here and who you might need to move on from so now's the time to try everything you've got